In the industry, everyone knows I hold Carolina in the palm of my hand. The day she became a movie queen, she kissed a male actor in front of everyone. She said, Director Oscar Wong, I'm not very familiar with him outside of work, so please don't associate unrelated people with me. Thank you. As she wished, I withdrew from her world. Later, she knelt before me with reddened eyes, begging for my forgiveness. I laughed. Isn't breaking up what you wanted? Now you've only lost your fame and fortune, but you've gained love. The spotlight shines on the award stage. In front of the crowd, a woman in a white dress gracefully walks up, with a perfect smile on her face. I am very grateful to someone who has accompanied me every step of the way to where I am today. I couldn't hide the smile on my face. The person on stage is my girlfriend. In three years, I have nurtured her from an unknown rookie actress to a household name and a movie queen. Loving someone is like tending to a flower. I gave her the best nutrients, and she has grown into my proudest achievement. The only thing that makes me unhappy is that my girlfriend refused my public proposal citing her career. Listening to her speech, is she finally going to make our relationship public today? He is my mentor, my friend, and someone indispensable in my growth. He is, Paul. My smile froze as I watched my movie queen girlfriend, holding the trophy, confess her love to another actor with deep affection. Someone asked, Miss Carolina. It is said that you have always relied on the support of director Oscar Wong. Is there any truth to the rumors about your close relationship? She wore an innocent smile, and firmly replied word by word, Director Oscar Wong, I'm not very familiar with him outside of work, so please don't associate unrelated people with me. Thank you. Three years of meticulous care and companionship, all denied by one casual sentence from her mouth. My mind was in a fog as I groggily returned home. After sitting alone for a long time, I fell asleep. The next day, I woke up and checked my phone. The number of messages was so overwhelming that it caused a lag. Although Carolina never publicly disclosed our relationship, I never hid it from my friends in the industry. Now, after this incident, they all sent their condolences. I rubbed my still red eyes and replied to each one, Don't worry, I'm fine. I rejected my friend's suggestion to blacklist Carolina and stated that we have nothing to do with each other anymore. If we meet her in the future, just handle things professionally. After replying to the messages, I splashed some cool tap water on my face and took a deep breath. I, Oscar, have always been able to pick up and let go. Love fiercely and move on ruthlessly. When I first set my eyes on Carolina, I went against my friend's advice and insisted on grooming her. Today, I accept what has happened. It's just a stumble. After falling, I can get up, dust myself off, and keep moving forward. I deleted Carolina from my contacts on WeChat and blocked all her communication channels. From yesterday until now. She hasn't sent me a single message. Of course, I don't need her to. After arranging the audition time at the Film City with my assistant, I tidied up and left. The Film City was bustling, with some people casting curious glances. Having heard the rumors, I ignored them all and quickly arrived at the set. After graduating, I became a director. With my talent and family resources, I quickly became a renowned director whose films always hit. My assistant came over with her phone, showing me a new post. Carolina's official account posted, Thank you all for your concern. Even though Jasmine and South City Storm are filming at the same time, I will work hard on both. This is my first collaboration with Paul since our announcement. Please support us. At the end of the post, she tagged the official accounts of both productions. My assistant had a subtle expression. Jasmine is a project Carolina just accepted. And South City Storm is the film I'm currently shooting for the past three years. Without exception, Carolina has always been my leading actress. Her post implies that she still thinks I'll let her continue as the leading actress in South City Storm. I shrugged and told my assistant. It doesn't matter. Let her post whatever she wants. We'll pick our actors and shoot our film. Honestly, I'm curious. Why does Carolina think that after what she said at the award ceremony yesterday, I would still treat her as I did before? Do I look like some kind of fool who enjoys being cheated on? The audition for the female lead and Carolina's Facebook post were released one after another, quickly attracting a large number of sharp-nosed journalists. While I went outside for some fresh air, cameras were thrust in my face. Miss Carolina has publicly announced that she will be the female lead in South City Storm. Why is the audition still ongoing? If the female lead is already decided, isn't continuing the audition a waste of everyone's time? The intentionally provocative questions caused the auditioning actors to hesitate. I stopped, looked coldly at the reporter, and asked, Do you know who I am? He instinctively took a step back and lowered his voice. Is that even a question, Director Oscar? Then let me ask you, what is this place? Well, this is. He realized the implication and lowered his head. I smiled, looking at the eager team of reporters ready to jump in, and said loudly, I am the director. This is my crew, 
my territory. I make the decisions. Everything is done according to my rules. Are you trying to teach me how to do my job? I added pointedly. If you have nothing to do, go home and rest. Stop trying to stir up big news. When I returned to the crew and checked my phone, a Facebook post popped up. Paul, spending time with the one you love is a joy. Today, I hope Carolina spends more time with me. So please don't disturb her with irrelevant people and things. The attached photo showed Carolina smiling as she fed a grape to Paul's mouth. I was speechless. They clearly understood how to leverage this hot topic. While I was the one being disturbed, they acted like innocent victims, stirring up gossip. What a bunch of nauseating people. The trending topic continued to ferment, and everyone wanted to know who the female lead of my new movie would be. That night, Carolina started a live stream. She happily interacted with her fans at first, but midway through, she frowned when someone asked in the comments. Carolina, aren't you going to be the female lead in South City Storm? Why are the auditions still ongoing? Her eyes slightly narrowed as she smiled and said. The normal process has to be completed. Oscar told me. She stopped mid-sentence as if realizing something, then closed her mouth, acting as if she had to keep a secret. Carolina's hesitant demeanor made the audience more excited, convinced that my audition was just a formality. The audition was unaffected by them. Whenever someone nosy asked, I would close my black notebook and reply with a half-smile. Why don't you take the director's seat and make the decisions? I didn't respond directly, but Carolina took my silence as consent, becoming more confident and frequently appearing in public with Paul. First, they were spotted together at the airport, then on a food street in Sanya, in paparazzi photos. The two of them walked on the golden beach in swimwear, smiling at each other under the sunlight. Fans were thrilled, calling them a once-in-a-century perfect couple. In two days, Carolina and Paul capitalized on the attention, receiving numerous endorsements and scripts. My audition lasted three days. At this critical moment, I chose an unexpected, completely unknown girl as the actress. On the third day, as I looked at the girl with sparkling eyes behind the curtain, her face lightly flushed like the first rays of dawn, I immediately decided that she would be the female lead in South City Storm. After three days of holding back, my assistant couldn't wait to post on Facebook. Welcome the lead actress to the South City Storm family. Work starts tomorrow. At Lee, the audience, who had been eagerly waiting, rushed to see the post and were stunned when they saw who was tagged. They started discussing. It's not Carolina. Who is this? Do you know her? Feeling deceived. They flooded Carolina's Facebook, demanding an explanation. Soon, she went live again, with red-rimmed eyes. Carolina sincerely apologized to the camera. I'm sorry for disappointing everyone. I understand Oscar's choice if he thinks I'm not good enough. I just hope he isn't still angry. Paul gently patted her shoulder, sighing after she spoke, looking utterly aggrieved. Everything was implied without being said. On one side was a movie queen, and on the other, an unknown girl who had only played extras before the audience thinking they understood the truth, became furious. Stop being angry. Was Carolina wronged by the director's backdoor dealings? This is so unfair. My assistant, sitting on a wooden stool on the set, turned green with anger and said. We were too busy with the additions to respond, and now they're stirring up trouble and playing the victim. They really have no shame. Seeing him rolling up his sleeves, ready to fight back, I couldn't help but laugh. This only made him angrier. You're laughing. You should have crushed them three days ago. I spread my hands. This is free publicity. Why turn it down? If we missed this, we'd have to spend our own money on promotion later. Putting aside other factors, I'm still grateful for the drama they caused. South City Storm hasn't even started filming yet, but it's already widely known. Anyone with a phone knows about the show. All right. All right. You're the director. Can I hit back at them now? My assistant waved his phone in front of me. I nodded. His eyes lit up. The next second, he started yelling again. Ah, who posted before me? Let me see, Isabel, isn't that Sophia? At his words, everyone looked at the girl in the corner. She innocently looked up and blinked. Did we have a rule against posting on Facebook? The assistant was speechless. No. I watched them with a smile and pulled out my phone to check Facebook. Sophia, the lead actress I selected, might look soft, but she's quite the fighter. In just a few minutes, she had already posted 18 Facebook updates. Hello, Senior Carolina, didn't you say our director had nothing to do with you, if it's not related? Why mention Oscar? Who are you? Anyway, when did the director ever say he was going to cast you in his new film? What obligation does he have to choose you? Is the director your daddy? Each Facebook post tagged Carolina and provided evidence. The fans went quiet and retreated. This girl is fierce, really putting her in her place. Ten minutes passed with no response from Carolina or Paul. I was engrossed, shaking my head in disbelief. It's strange why I ever liked someone like that. A voice came from beside me. What's strange about it? Even ancient heroes struggled to resist beautiful women. 
I realized Sophia was still nearby. She smiled. Although I don't think she's a beauty. Maybe director Oscar just had a moment of weakness. I twitched slightly and reminded her. I'm your boss. Hmm? So. Keep talking. And I'll dock your pay. Fine. You win. Just then. An unknown call came to my phone. I raised an eyebrow. This number was private. Known to few. It could only be. I answered the call. And there was silence on the other end. Wrong number. If you don't speak. I'm hanging up. The other person panicked. And a familiar voice spoke. Oscar. Do we have to do this? Sure enough. It was Carolina. What way? She hesitated. Then softened her tone. Sounding like she used to when we were together. Even if we can't be together. Can't we at least be friends? I couldn't help but laugh. Be friends. Friends. What kind of relationship do we have now? What do you mean, even if we can't be together? You make it sound like I was your simp. Always failing to win you over. So now I'm angry seeing you with someone else. Please. This is cheating. Carolina. If you want to continue enjoying the benefits I used to provide. Just say so. Do you think playing the role of a benevolent person is clever? Carolina. Let me be clear. Remember this. I'm openly threatening you now. The reason I haven't publicly destroyed you is not because I'm magnanimous. But because I want to make your downfall more spectacular. Got it. If so. Get ready. Carolina's voice turned sharp. Let me tell you. Paul is the son of the president of the Wong group. You can't beat him. Before I could reply. A soft female voice beside me spoke gently. Brother. Are you still on the phone? I've been waiting for you. There was a brief silence on the other end. Followed by an explosion. Who's there with you? Oscar. You betrayed me. I rubbed my ear. Speechless. And hung up. When she called back. I blocked the number. After finishing all these actions. I looked at Sophia. Nice acting. You really have a knack for this. Sophia smiled. Of course. I shook my head in resignation. Just as I was about to leave. I remembered something. Paul is the son of the president of the Wong group. How come I didn't know this? Thinking it over. I pulled out my phone and sent a message. Dad. Do you have an illegitimate son? As soon as I returned to the set. My assistant came over with his phone. He looked extremely upset. As if he had swallowed a hundred flies. I stopped. Amused. And asked. What did Carolina post this time? He showed me the phone. Thank you all for your concern. I want to focus more on my work and improve my acting skills. Please don't pay attention to other matters and look forward to my new works. The picture was a sweet photo of her and Paul. My assistant's face turned green again as he said. She has the nerve to talk about acting. It was all thanks to you. He paused and then added. Luckily. You finally gave up on her. The filming of South City Storm progressed smoothly. It's a spy drama. And the female lead. Sophia is an ordinary person who gets involved in a mission. Once she understands its importance, she decisively cooperates. In front of the camera, her eyes conveyed layered emotions. The retreat born from fear constantly struggled with her good intentions, which then evolved into an unyielding resolve driven by her anger towards evil. This deep internal struggle and complex emotional transition deeply moved the viewers. I couldn't help but sigh again. Comparing acting skills is indeed a futile exercise. On Carolina's end, she and Paul frequently posted set photos and interactions. Attracting a large number of CP fans, the previous incidents were gradually forgotten. In interviews, Carolina continued to smile sweetly. Director Oscar said his female lead has talent. Miss Carolina, do you think you have talent? She tilted her head slightly, covering her mouth as if embarrassed. Well, why not? Watching the interview, our whole team laughed. Meanwhile, Carolina's fans celebrated, challenging Sophia to a showdown through their works. This time, Sophia only posted four words in response. As you wish, the film took eight months to shoot, and by the time it was scheduled for release, nearly a year had passed. During this period, Carolina's fans constantly brought up the competition between the two films, generating plenty of buzz. She and Paul also frequently posted set photos, steadily growing their CP fanbase. Sophia, on the other hand, stayed focused. Every time I saw her, she was either studying her script or consulting with senior actors. Finally, the movie release day arrived, strategically planned. Both films premiered on the same day. A large audience first flocked to see Carolina's Jasmine. Reviews came in quickly. Some remained silent for a long time before tentatively asking. Am I the only one who thinks it's bad? The response was immediate agreement. What kind of acting is this? The lead's face is so stiff. You'd think it was AI. She didn't capture the essence of the pure white Jasmine at all. Is this what they call a movie queen? Some stubborn CP fans defended. What's wrong with it? The chemistry between the leads is sweet. I loved it. But even this voice was soon drowned out by criticism. Meanwhile, South City Storm, the film everyone doubted from the start, made a comeback. The lead actress Sophia portrayed innocence when facing the mafia, 
and then displayed immense determination when taking on her mission. In the climactic scene where she sacrifices herself, her eyes turned slightly red as she declared she had no regrets. The tear that never fell vanished as she closed her eyes forever. The audience was thrilled. Prepared media accounts quickly spliced together scenes of the two actresses' performances. They titled it, The Difference in Acting Skills Between a Movie Queen and a Newcomer. Sophia reposted her previous four-word Facebook, directly responding with, Thank you for yielding. These few words sent her new fans into a frenzy. Unquestionably, Carolina was utterly defeated in this battle. She responded with one line, I don't think I did anything wrong. The next day, rumors emerged that Paul was the son of the Wang Group president. The person involved didn't respond directly, but instead posted photos of himself and Carolina on a luxury trip, driving a fancy car, to onlookers. This was a tacit acknowledgement. Carolina's crisis was quietly diverted, and CP fans affectionately started calling Paul the Crown Prince and Carolina the Crown Princess. These titles were so cringeworthy that I felt like digging a hole and disappearing. I turned to see my most talkative assistant and Sophia, both looking mildly worried. Sophia asked, Is his father really the president of the Wong Group? Are we going to be beaten just because they bring in the big guns? I couldn't help but laugh as I reassured them. Don't worry. I know President Wong. He's got a good temper and wouldn't do such a thing. As soon as I finished speaking, my phone rang. I walked to the corner and answered. A robust voice started yelling on the other end. Are people blind nowadays? How do I look anything like him? You brat. Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? No wonder you asked if I had an illegitimate child last time. I can't believe my good intentions were taken for granted. If I had known it would come to this, I would have put my foot down earlier. The voice was so loud it made my ears itch. I held the phone away and rubbed my ear while he continued ranting. No way. I'm going to prove it on Facebook right now. I quickly stopped him. Hey, dad. Wait. Don't rush. I have a plan. The old man was even more annoyed. What plan? Don't you see they're starting to slander you? I fell silent. The public opinion was intense. And those people were attacking the South City Storm crew just to support their so-called crown prince. It seemed even a passing dog would get cursed. I softened my tone. Don't worry. I won't let myself suffer. The old man wasn't happy. You better not. If you can't handle it, come home. You could have just taken it easy. But you had to be a director. He muttered a few more complaints and then hung up. I looked at my phone. A smile slowly forming. Meanwhile, Carolina, taking advantage of the situation secured several more scripts and endorsements. Curious people calculated their schedules, noting that they were fully booked for the next year. My phone buzzed with a message from an unknown number. See, I told you I chose the right person. I could almost see Carolina's smug face through the screen. I replied, the higher you climb, the harder you fall. After sending the message, I immediately blocked the number, almost as if to spite me. As soon as I announced our new film would be a historical drama genre, Carolina immediately declared she had taken on a role in a historical drama drama too. Sophia hugged her script to her chest. She earnestly promised, I won't let you lose. Just focus on the filming. I chose you for your talent. I paused my signing. Don't worry about anything else. Got it, boss. The girl smiled, waved her fists in the air, and turned to leave. True to her word, Sophia devoted herself to the filming even more seriously. Yet, she still found joy in engaging with others. Posting a behind-the-scenes clip. In the scattered fragments, she sat on a couch in a white plush cloak, her gaze filled with weakness and confusion. As the wind blew, her brow furrowed slightly, as if endless thoughts of longing were being pulled away from her. Her almond-shaped eyes narrowed, and she raised her hand as if to grasp something. At that moment, her consciousness faded with the wind, and her hand fell after a gentle grasp at the void. In the comments, Sophia's personality was completely different from her noble and cool demeanor in the clip. She didn't hide her intentions and directly tagged Carolina. She wrote, Senior, are you working hard on your filming today, striving to match your example? Though clearly sarcastic, it was hard to fault her words. I couldn't help but laugh out loud. On Carolina's end, there was no response for a long time, making her fans impatient and prompting them to urge her to respond. Eventually, some behind-the-scenes footage leaked out, but it turned out to be paparazzi shots. One moment, she said, this place is under my protection, got it. The next moment, a traitor's bronze sword pierced the female lead's chest. Her eyes widened in anger as she shouted loudly. How could it be you? The caption thoughtfully responded on Carolina's behalf. Stop urging Miss Carolina to release behind-the-scenes footage. She really doesn't have any. The videos she shoots need another two days and nights of fine-tuning before they can be seen. Everyone fell silent after watching it. They suddenly remembered the fear of Carolina's stiff performance in Jasmine a while ago. Her fans were collectively stunned, unable to defend her. They looked at Sophia's behind-the-scenes clip and then at their own lead actress, whose stiffness resembled a thousand-year-old monster, and shrank back. People began to discuss. 
Others death scenes, the tear that never fell, hesitant words, finally closing their eyes. Our lead's death scene, spitting blood, eyes wide open, shouting to the sky, how could it be you? Stop, it's really embarrassing. Under the opposing team's official Facebook, netizens started questioning their casting choices. Carolina's official account responded, there are always a few scenes where filming gets stuck. Please don't only focus on the worst moments. Just after this announcement was posted, someone released a clip of Carolina arguing with the director. Carolina toyed with her red-tipped fingers and sneered. So what if my expressions are stiff? So what if I didn't cry? Can't they fix it in post-production? If I have to do everything perfectly, what are they there for? I've always acted like this. If even Oscar could handle it, why can't you? These few sentences revealed so much that netizens were stunned. A comment appeared. What do you mean you've always acted like this? I used to praise her acting. Seeing the netizens start to support me, saying I've borne too much, I smiled and told my assistant to begin the next step. I didn't want to see this annoying person jumping around in front of me every day. All the raw video clips from her past shoots were released by various accounts. For example, the sensual bathing scene in the lake, with unedited footage showing her elbows awkwardly placed, like a puppet on strings, the ethereal and agile back view, which turned out to be a stand-in, her dramatic reactions to wire work, where I, as the director, had to personally guide her step by step. The before and after comparisons made it clear what Carolina truly was and how much I had done for her. As everyone realized how terrible her acting was, all the scripts she had received were withdrawn. Producers claimed they didn't have the skills to handle such a great star. Netizens began to question, if Carolina is this bad, why did director Oscar still support her? With that effort, he could have made several more films. Could this be love? Remember at the award ceremony, Carolina denied any relationship with director Oscar. After that, they went their separate ways. Netizens dug deeper and almost uncovered every detail of my private life. I sighed, patted my face, and once again blamed myself for being a poor judge of character. In the midst of my public humiliation, Sophia posted on Facebook, Everyone has a past. Let's not dwell on it. Director Oscar said he values the future more. As a victim, Netizen seemed to realize something after reading her post and agreed, That's right, that's right. They started to curse Carolina. Dirty thing, stay away and protect our director Oscar. Director Oscar has nothing to do with this person, don't spread falsehoods. Carolina's reputation was ruined. Her integrity was questioned, and her acting skills were inadequate. Soon, the award committee announced a review of her accolades. As a result, she lost all the honors she had gained in three years. At this critical moment, she changed her phone number and sent me a message. I haven't lost. It's just the entertainment industry. Once I become the daughter-in-law of the Wang family, I won't need to work. I looked at the invitation to the Wang Group's 60th anniversary gala in my hand and shook my head. Is it really like that? I doubt it. With her endorsements and scripts gone, although the company hadn't terminated her contract, Carolina was essentially unemployed and almost blacklisted. She decided to drop the pretense and became an internet wife, publicly showing off her love with Paul. She posted two Facebook updates. Paul is preparing our wedding. We're about to attend the Wang Group's 60th anniversary gala. Have you ever seen such an event? Coincidentally, the Wang Group announced that this year's gala would allow some media journalists to participate. From Carolina's perspective, Paul was supporting her and promoting their wedding. In the lounge, I knocked on the door before entering. The moment she saw me, Sophia's face lit up, reminding me of the proud tuxedo cat I used to pet at the park. Director Oscar, it's rare for you to visit. I smiled and handed her the invitation. I happen to need a date. Miss Sophia, would you be willing? Sophia opened the invitation and read aloud, her tone rising with excitement, the Wang Group's 60th anniversary gala. You're going too? Yes, and there's going to be quite a show, I nodded. So, Miss Sophia, before I could ask again, she placed her hand in my upturned palm. Her eyes sparkled with joy, her mouth unable to hide a smile, yet she pretended to be aloof, tilting her chin up. Then I reluctantly agreed to be your date. The gala arrived quickly. The Wang Group released a statement that they would announce an important matter at the event, revealing the identity of the president's son, who had been the subject of much discussion. Carolina was certain it was Paul and was extremely pleased. At the gala, as soon as Sophia and I got out of the car, we ran into Carolina waiting at the entrance. Her eyes widened as if she had been deeply betrayed. You, you. Sophia, with a faint smile, placed her soft hand on my arm, her cheek close to my shoulder. She blinked at Carolina. Senior Carolina, why are you stopping me and my boyfriend? Boyfriend. Sophia nodded naturally. Yes. Carolina's expression changed multiple times as more people gathered around. She looked at us angrily. How can you do this to me? What does she have that I don't? 
She grabbed my arm, but I immediately pulled away. Even so, she put on a deeply wronged look, proving she still had some acting skills. At that moment, a slightly mocking voice called out. Oscar, you came too. I turned and saw Paul approaching, arm in arm with a middle-aged woman, looking calm. There's no need for your concern, Wong family or Paul, I replied with a playful smile, locking eyes with him. He blinked uncomfortably but quickly composed himself, saying, You can laugh now, but once you step inside, you'll see who the real clown is. As he spoke, he stroked his smooth chin as if twirling a non-existent mustache. I shook my head and looked at the woman beside him. She was dressed plainly, her cotton blouse faded, her pants slightly rolled up as if they had been washed countless times. Her makeup was very light, and her face showed signs of aging, with her hair disheveled and eyes darting around nervously but shining with excitement. She was undoubtedly the person my father had mentioned. Before I could speak, Paul wrapped an arm around Carolina's shoulder, looking affectionate. Carolina, sorry for the delay. Today is a very important day, so I brought my mother. I hope you don't mind the sudden meeting. Of course not, Carolina immediately leaned against Paul, looking demure. She turned to the woman, Auntie, nice to meet you. I'm your son's girlfriend. He must have mentioned me, the woman nodded, girlfriend, huh? Girlfriend. Then fell silent, staring ahead. The atmosphere turned awkward. Unexpectedly, Paul suddenly changed the topic loudly, I know you can't let go of Carolina, but please stop pestering us. How did you even follow us here? This isn't a place for your antics. His words drew many eyes to us. Before I could retort, Sophia spoke up loudly. Do you have any shame? Can't control your girlfriend, stopping us at the entrance, openly flirting with my boyfriend in front of me. Are you sick? There are so many security guards here. Should I ask them? Before Paul could reply, Sophia pulled an unwilling security guard into the fray. Brother, don't be afraid. Tell the truth. Everyone's watching. They won't do anything to you. The Wong family can't bully people in broad daylight. There's surveillance here. If they dare twist the truth, our director will back you up and bring them down. I scratched my head, feeling helpless. Was she trying to expose me? The security guard, seemingly encouraged by her words, steadied his gaze. Mr. Paul, it's indeed your girlfriend who has been harassing them. The crowd buzzed with whispers, and Paul was momentarily speechless, stammering you, 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 unable to form a complete sentence. I said, Paul, I advise you, if you're unsure about something, don't speak too soon. If you're uncertain, investigate and verify first, or else. Before I could finish, there was a loud slap. Paul's mother, her face full of anger, had struck Carolina. I despise people like you who are unfaithful and disloyal. Please, auntie, listen to me. It's not as they say, Carolina pleaded. The scene became chaotic. Sophia winked at me and said to them teasingly, You guys catch up. We're heading in. Bye. Inside, Sophia was still beaming, her invisible tail practically wagging. Are you that happy? I asked, curious. Of course, she hummed. I told you, I wouldn't let you lose. So her earlier words had this meaning too. I couldn't help but smile, gently tapping her head. What are you thinking about all the time? She pouted slightly holding her head, but quickly smiled again. We gradually moved away from the chaos, walking further and further away. Hey, I said you were my boyfriend just now. You won't be mad, right? No. The gala soon began. From afar, I saw Carolina looking disheveled, her face bearing a handprint. But she seemed to have calmed down, sitting with a cold expression next to Paul and his mother. Paul sat in the middle, looking hopeful despite his melancholy, while Carolina blushed and stared at her phone. Moments later, I received a text message. How could you humiliate and betray me like this, Oscar? Do you have no heart? Just wait, today I'll make sure you pay back a hundredfold. Sophia, standing beside me, waved her hand in front of my face, displeased. Wow. Director Oscar seems to care a lot about her, she said casually, do you want me to bring her over so you can talk? I stared at her, making her turn away in slight embarrassment. Then I smiled and replied, no need, I'm just watching a show. Halfway through the event, the host announced. Next up, we have our group's president, Wong, who will announce something important. Paul's eyes lit up instantly, staring intently at the host. He put his arm around Carolina, his gaze intense and his body trembling slightly with a mix of anticipation and nervousness. A spirited middle-aged man strode onto the stage, taking the microphone from the host. He cleared his throat, his eyes bright, and began speaking without any preamble. Recently, I've noticed a lot of media coverage about my son, and this has been gaining more and more attention. So today, 
I've invited the key person involved in this matter here. He looked down at the audience, casting a playful glance at Paul, who returned the gaze with fervor, unaware of any impending trouble. The president continued, I'm sure everyone is curious about my son's identity. He is. Under the gaze of the crowd, Paul held his mother's hand. The old man paused for a moment, building suspense, before saying three words. Oscar. A spotlight suddenly shone on me. The nonchalance on Sophia's face vanished as she stared at me in shock. Carolina's neck stiffened as she slowly turned to look in my direction. Paul's face turned pale as he stared incredulously at his mother. And that woman, her face suddenly contorted in anger, stood up and yelled. You heartless men, ingrate. You won't even acknowledge your own son. A tiger doesn't eat its cubs, but listen to him. Everyone, is he even human? She tried to rush the stage, but the prepared police restrained her. She struggled violently, shouting. I raised our son with great difficulty. He worked so hard to earn your recognition, and you still consider him worthless. The president nodded to the host, and the big screen behind him began playing surveillance footage. The first clip showed a servant banging on the master bedroom door in the middle of the night, shouting, Mr. Wong, open up. Don't you love me anymore? Didn't you say you'd marry me? How can you marry someone else? She clutched a knife, frantically scratching the door until the police arrived and took her away. The second clip was a series of scenes showing the same servant repeatedly being driven away by security from the mansion gates. The third clip, two years later, showed her holding a newborn baby, smiling manically, Mr. Wong, this is our son. Won't you acknowledge him? After the videos, the president explained. It turned out that Paul's mother suffered from severe delusions. In her younger years, she worked as a servant for the Wong family and fantasized about an intimate relationship with the president. This was initially just in her mind, but on the day of the president's wedding, her symptoms worsened. The father had tried to get her medical help, but she was never fully cured. The doctor said that as long as she stayed around the Wong family, her condition would only worsen, and indeed, her episodes became more frequent, blurring her grasp on reality. Eventually, she stole a baby from somewhere and convinced herself that it was her son with the president. In her delusion, the president was a heartless man who had abandoned her and their child. She raised her son with the belief that he would one day prove himself, and she instilled these ideas in him from a young age, leading Paul to firmly believe in this false reality, resulting in today's farce. The president also presented a paternity test report and a series of medical records and diagnoses. The crowd murmured, casting strange looks at Paul and Carolina. I thought Paul was the heir to the group, but who would have thought he was a clown? Carolina can't act. What will she do now? Resort to selling sob stories. Paul's face turned ashen, his lips trembling, unable to say a word. Carolina looked at me with a mix of resentment and regret. Staring motionlessly, I smiled, slowly stood up, and walked to the stage. Hello everyone. Tonight I'd like to introduce myself with a new identity. I am Oscar the legitimate son and the only son of President Wong. I urge those with mental health issues to seek treatment as soon as possible. Now, please, leave. I pointed to the door. Do I need to personally escort you out? The group was thrown out amidst gasps and whispers. The woman, who had been cursing and struggling, suddenly went silent when Paul slapped her. Tears filled her eyes. The doors closed again, and tonight was my night. The party had ended. Sophia went to the restroom, leaving me to wait for her by the door. As I stepped outside, I saw Carolina rushing over and kneeling in front of me. Her eyes were bloodshot, like she was clutching at her last lifeline. Oscar, you still love me, right? Can we get back together? I was wrong. Please, let us go back to how we were. I truly know I was wrong, and I won't ever do it again. Wasn't breaking up what you wanted. Now you've just lost your reputation, but you've gained love, Carolina. For three years, I nurtured a flower. I painstakingly fertilized, watered and protected it from pests every day. It bloomed beautifully, thinking this was its natural state, but it forgot that it was its roots absorbing the nutrients, and the one nourishing those roots was me. One day, it was cut from the stem and taken away. It was proud, thinking it had finally escaped its ugly roots and could reach greater heights, but it forgot that without its roots, it couldn't survive long. Carolina, I despise you, but don't get me wrong. I don't hate you for betraying me. I hate your betrayal for being so foolish. Your foolishness made me look incredibly foolish. How could I have been so blind to nurture such a weed? Sophia emerged just in time, suddenly clinging tightly to my arm, speaking in a mocking tone. Why is my sister kneeling? Now that she can't be Mrs. Wong, is she here to find a sugar daddy? I lifted my eyes slightly and glanced at Carolina, then turned and walked away with Sophia. She froze, staggering to her feet. She tried to follow me but the security quickly restrained her. A desperate scream echoed behind me, Oscar, look at me. I turned to glance at her, seeing the hope in her eyes. 
I spat harshly into the flowerbed by the path, then I turned and walked straight ahead. Later, due to the severe impact of this incident, Paul and his foster mother were condemned by the entire internet, and he was completely blacklisted. His spirit ultimately shattered under the weight of lies and reality. Not long after, news broke that he had killed his foster mother before committing suicide, and Carolina never appeared in the public eye again. The most widespread rumor was that she tried to clear her name but ended up being swindled out of all her assets by a scam group. She eventually ended up on the streets, dying of depression. Those who treat true hearts as worthless, will eventually, suffer the consequences. Sophia's side story. Sophia had known about Oscar, her senior, for a long time. He was a famous genius during his school days. Unfortunately, by the time she enrolled, Oscar was already interning and rarely came back to school, so she never had the chance to meet him. Later, Sophia followed Oscar into the entertainment industry and discovered, her long-admired senior Oscar already had a girl by his side. The girl had an innocent smile, and the love in Oscar's eyes for her seemed genuine. Sophia felt heartbroken but chose to respect Oscar's choice. Just when she was about to give up, she discovered, the girl Oscar cherished so much didn't deserve his love at all. Carolina was arrogant, didn't hone her acting skills, and took advantage of Oscar's love recklessly. Sophia was furious and heartbroken for Oscar. She decided to bide her time, diligently improving her acting skills, and cherishing every opportunity to practice, even as an extra. A girl like Carolina would reveal her true colors sooner or later. She couldn't stay by Oscar's side forever. Sophia encouraged herself secretly, keeping an eye on their every move. Her acting skills improved rapidly, and directors began offering her scripts. She refused many, still choosing roles that allowed her to practice while staying close to Oscar. The opportunity soon came. One day, Carolina, holding the Best Actress trophy, confessed her love to Paul in public. Sophia watched Oscar, feeling heartbroken. The light in Oscar's eyes was gone, as if he might shatter at any moment. She bit her lip and began to doubt herself. If she had told Oscar earlier, would he be less sad? She wanted Oscar to be happy. Fortunately, Oscar recovered mostly by the next day. Finally, she had the chance to stand in front of Oscar confidently. Hello, Director Oscar. I'm actress Sophia. Extra Chapter 02. Sophia feared they might rekindle their old flame. But fortunately, Oscar was resolute. Having the chance to spend every day with Oscar, she was overjoyed and secretly tried to treat him well. The first strawberry milk tea of autumn was bought for Oscar. Afraid he might notice something, Sophia bought milk tea for everyone in the crew and finally handed the special one with extra strawberries to Oscar. Sometimes you should try something you haven't had before. She smiled and told Oscar. Their distance gradually closed. Someone badmouthed Oscar. That couldn't be tolerated. She immediately fired back. Carolina tried to bully Oscar. No way. She had to work harder. She even gave up playing games and stayed up late studying scripts. When she was chosen as the lead actress in Oscar's new drama for the second time, Sophia's heart almost jumped out. She seriously said, I won't let you lose. These words carried her little secret. She wouldn't let him lose this confrontation, nor would she let Oscar lose to Carolina. She heard Paul was the president of the Wong group, but Sophia didn't care. She wanted to be on the same front as Oscar. Fearless of anything, she didn't expect Oscar to attend the party too. When he showed up in the lounge with an invitation, Sophia almost jumped up. I happen to need a date. Miss Sophia, would you do me the honor? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, I do. Oscar, I'll do anything you say. If it weren't for Oscar being here, Sophia felt she might throw off her shoes and dance barefoot, doing two hours of ballet and spinning a hundred circles, too happy. But in front of Oscar, she had to be reserved. She could only hold back, place her hand in Oscar's, lift her chin, and say, then I'll reluctantly agree to be your date. This way, he wouldn't notice her little thoughts. Right. Wait, does it seem a bit too cold? Would he misunderstand? What if he misunderstands? Extra Chapter 03 Sophia's mind was spinning all the way, being Oscar's date, appearing at the party together. Oh my, she wouldn't even dare dream of this. Just after getting out of the car, they bumped into the annoying Carolina. Sophia's alarm went off, seeing Oscar do nothing. She mustered the courage to hold Oscar's arm and started in a mocking tone. Senior, why are you stopping me and my boyfriend? Boyfriend. Oh. Look at that ugly face turning green. So amusing. Sophia nodded naturally. Yes. The ugly face was furious. Saying. It's like you're the only one with a boyfriend. So what if she had one? Why so smug? Sophia happily waved to Carolina. Then wait for your boyfriend outside. Senior. We're going in now. Bye. The best person was by her side. This was the light she had cherished for six years. What happened to others? She didn't care. Are you that happy? Oscar asked. And she answered without hesitation. Of course. I told you, I won't let you lose. At such a sentimental moment, 
Oscar knocked on her head. So annoying. Angry for two seconds. She thought, this is Oscar. Forget it. She chose to forgive him. I just said you're my boyfriend. You're not angry, are you? No. Oscar was really the best. She would love him forever and ever. Extra Chapter 04. She thought she knew Oscar well enough, but Oscar turned out to be the hidden gem. He was actually the son of the president of the Oscar group. He kept it hidden so well. She worried for so long. Sophia was angry for three seconds, then turned to see Oscar shining under the spotlight, and shamefully felt her heart flutter again. Forget it. Forget it. Sophia had a big heart and wouldn't hold grudges against little Oscar. She told herself, her eyes sparkling, staring unblinkingly at Oscar. The party ended, and many reporters surrounded Oscar, just like they had surrounded Carolina a year ago. Someone asked about Carolina and Oscar's relationship. Oscar smiled politely and answered, Please don't link unrelated people with me. Thank you, it would trouble me greatly. After answering, Oscar looked at her again. Why aren't you leaving? Sophia saw Carolina's pale face outside the crowd and smiled. So good. The bullet Carolina shot at Oscar a year ago finally returned to her. Her story with Oscar ended here. Now. It was her turn. Right. Leaving the venue. Sophia still didn't let go of Oscar's hand. Oscar didn't say anything either. Under the streetlights, they walked side by side, moving farther and farther away. 